Hey, it's Arrow. It doesn't matter if you're walking through the front door of your house or walking through a crowd of people at work. The one thing we're doing in America right now is ignoring the important stuff. We decide when it's time to take the dogs to the vet. We decide if we're going to hit the grocery store before the big football game. We decide if the car really has something wrong with it. Most of the time, the clickety, 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 click, click, click. Oh, we can hide that just by turning up the radio. Don't you think it's about time we put the brakes on the fakes? It's time to bring Big Al back into the studio. You know, I'm just like you. I love when people come into my business at the same point. Now, now that's interesting you say that because when you say you love it when people come into the business, is that are people doing so much on the internet and not coming into Performance for it? Yeah, that that's predominantly that's what they do. You know, they do all their searches, then they come in. You know, they come in with all their information, and it seems like sometimes when you go out to greet them, they they put up the force field. You know, and all we're trying to do at that point is trying to accommodate them, find out the information that they have, so that way we can find time and put things in a direction that needs to be, that'll accommodate them only. Yeah, but how is it that you help the consumer buy a better product? Um, by selecting the product with the myth that they came for, you know, because, you know, a lot of times they don't understand the product completely. They want this, they want that, you know, and they look in these catalogs, you know, if they don't beat, read the bottom right, you know, the manufacturer has the right to change the options at any time. You guys are known for that. Yeah. Well, it's not us guys. It's I, the manufacturer. Okay. You know, they, they think it's a good idea to offer it. Then they find out that there's not a call for it. And then through the line oh. being cost effective to keep the price of the car down, that's, you know, they don't offer the, that option. They just move it up to the next one. Really, I think it's probably just to move the next package up. Mm-hmm. And usually you can't get one thing without the other. And it always, you know, I just, I just want the fog lamps. Well, you can't just get fog lamps. You got to get the power windows and the aluminum wheels. Well, that package is, you know, nine hundred bucks. I can have fog lamps <clears throat> put in for, you know, two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. What is the one thing that people are looking for when they buy a car? I know comfort. I know security. Does anybody ever lift up the hood and look inside? Um, not necessarily. They just they hone in on the uh, window sticker. They look at the gas mileage. Yeah. You know, the two of them ride together in, you know, I was in the car business when, you know, you could open the hood and you could look down and you could see the oil filter and there's how you take off the alternator and, oh, I could do the starter. You know, they then the, the manufacturer went away from that and they were talking about doing a sealed hood to keep the customer out from underneath of it. But, you know, a good majority of people that I find, and it doesn't make a difference, man, woman, or, or child that comes in, I like to talk about the motor on the automobile because mm-hmm. that's one thing I am. I, li- I like motors. I like horsepower. You know, I like efficiency. I like everything about talking about what's under the hood because really that's, you know, like when you talk to somebody, it, you know, you want to know that they have a good sound mind. If you don't have a good engine, you really all the other buttons and everything else, if the car's not running and it's not performing to what your expectations were, what difference does it make? Where are the supercars from the 1970s? I mean, I don't see anything. I mean, I, I, I couldn't wait till I got older because then I could have one of those hot cars. And I, I'm not seeing a hot car. Well, the supercars are right in our, in our showroom at Performance Ford. We have a 2014 Shelby with 662 horsepower. Um, it's been rated at 200, 200 miles per hour. It actually broke wait, wait, the wait, it's, it's called a what? A Shelby? Shelby. GT500 Shelby. Really? Well, tell me about it. Well, a GT500 Shelby's got 662 horsepower. It's got all independent suspension. It's made by only two people specific. You know, usually it's a guy and a girl. Um, it's got a 5.8 liter, liter in it. It's got headers, you know, three inch exhaust. You know, it's got the bigger tires, offset tires, front and rear. I mean, it's really a masterpiece for what the car is. Now, it's a far cry from the 5,500 bucks you could have bought the old Shelby for right. back in the day. But, you know, you're getting all this. You know, for a comparable car, you go look at a Lamborghini or a, a Porsche, you're up to ninety, a hundred thousand, you know, dollars. And I don't know if you watch any of the racing, the SCCA, they pretty much spank them because of the performance of the car and the, the reliability and durability. Do you, do you do you think that your company is is putting a lot of focus on the classic cars because the baby boomer boomer generation can, you know, is is in that age where they want to reach back. Yeah, we're, we're, they're 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 trying to put all the horsepower in in the cars they possibly can. Right. But with the cafe restrictions, you know what we're actually doing is we're 
we're dropping down some of the motors and we're putting it into the torque rather than the horsepower. Torque is horsepower mm -hmm. anyways. You know, you can get a, a Focus with 240 horsepower supercharged. That's a, you know, a good little car, a tuner car that you can get. But they're not focusing more on the performance race cars, but they're performing their – they're going on the performance of, <clears throat> excuse me, of the car. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take a look at a, a Ford Fusion. You know, it looks like a lot of cars, you know, it's been deemed as uh, Austin Martin look alike. Um, it's really a good looking car. It's a wild car is what I call it. Let me ask you a car question because I'm, I'm kind of low on this answer. The When they started putting corn in fuel and they had to rebuild the engine to do this, didn't we really take away the power of the car? Yeah, you took away the power of the car, but, you know, your four-cylinder <clears throat> engines have about 180 horsepower as as normal. But your, torques, your torque is high. You're actually got cars that are faster on four-cylinders. Mustang's 2015 Mustang with a four-cylinder EcoBoost um, is going to have 300 horsepower. That's a four-cylinder with 300 horsepower. Yeah. So, now, yeah. Now, we're talking 300 horsepower, and, of course— Maybe it's my age, but I mean, all of a sudden, my insurance seems to go up. I mean, it's like, I mean, I, do people think like that when they go in there for a hot car? Yeah, they do. You know, when you look at a car, you know, I have parents that come in that buy cars for their kids, and obviously the kid's hot on the GT. Yeah. Well, that's that's our answer. You know, hey, look, take a look at this Mustang. It's 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 not rated as a performance car. It's rated as a six cylinder or four cylinder. When you get to the GTs and the GT five hundreds. Then, then it goes up at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, American Idol doesn't jump on those on those uh, Mustangs. American Idol seems to be doing more of the the fusions and stuff, and they make it look like that you can really design. You, I mean, is it tr do you truly go in there and design that Ford Fusion? You can go in and truly design your Ford Fusion. You really? can put uh, different splashes on them, stripes, you know, anything that you want. I mean, American Idol was, you know, they're big on the tech tech side of it. Yeah. And also the price point, and that's what they're getting at. You know, you can go and look at a Fusion, a Focus, and get one loaded out for about twenty five grand. Yeah. Where you know you can go buy a, a Fusion base for about twenty three thousand. I think I'd rather have a loaded up Focus, to be honest with you, because it has leather navigation, it has all the tech stuff, the my screen, heated seats, the big wheels. You know, and it's really a performing little car. I drive a, a Fusion Sport now, and you know I could have bought a Mustang, but you know, I want to get 27 miles, you know, to a gallon, 28 miles a gallon, but I still like the 300 horsepower that mm -hmm. I have. How important is it to always check the air in your tire? Uh, it's really important. Uh, two reasons is because, you know, your tires aren't friendly with low pressure because you're taking away to what the, the factory suggested air that's mm -hmm. supposed to be in the automobile also affects your handling of the automobile and it affects your gas mileage on the automobile. You know, uh, one thing that I, I – this – just, this just came to me the, that, I, that I hear a lot of is that, oh, I bought that car on eBay. Oh, I bought that car on Craigslist. Seriously, dude. I mean, I, I thought you were supposed to have face-to-face -face conversations when you were buying people's cars. Yeah, I've had those, <clears throat> I've had those conversations with people. Uh, it's kind of like playing roulette with only two chambers. Hmm. You know, it's either, either you're going to get a good one or you're going to get a bad one. And the majority of the time, people that are selling cars on eBay and Craigslist, um, they're selling them there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, because they went to the dealer and the dealer didn't give them enough money. And the dealer figures that there's going to be a cost to get this out to the public. Or they're going to sell it to these little side lots where you see that's how these used car companies get these little used cars. It's because we don't want them. Right. They're not worth it to the consumer. We don't want to put anybody in jeopardy, you know. You know, once these guys sell them a Craigslist, they're done. There's there's nothing left for them to do. Do you realize that the one person that I fear at a car dealership more than a salesperson is the guy out there in the maintenance department? Because I know that the moment I drop off my car for a simple oil change, he's going to come back and tell me there's 50,000 things wrong with the car. Is that his job to inform you? What? Why? Why is there always something wrong with my car? Preventative maintenance. Preve He's like a dentist. Preventative maintenance. So it's right. like a dentist. Go just to the like dentist a dentist. Say, Dude, you got a problem back there on molar number three. Right. You got a problem molar number three. You need to take care of it. You know, it, it's going to cost you about 100 bucks. And we can get in there. We clean out the plaque and, and cap it off for you. 
no, 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 I'm good. I don't just don't have the money right now. It's fine. It's not bothering me. Well, lo and behold, six months down the road, that little cavity's got a little bit bigger, and now it's worked into your roots. And, you know, maybe there's a root canal or there's a crown, and then there's pain, and then there's time out of work. Same thing goes with the automobile. You know, these guys are trained to go in there and to look at the cars and to know. You know, they put a tire meter on. They look at air filters. They look at the tires to see if they're weathered and cracked. Um, they're just trying to prevent maintenance. They're also telling you that if there's something wrong, you need to, you know, you need to take care of it. You don't want to. Uh, obviously, you sign something stating that you decline it. But, you know, a good majority of the people that I sell cars to that maintain, maintain them, when they come in, they bring me their maintain record. I take a look at the record. I say, well, geez, you know, you seem to have taken care of that car well. And uh, I think I'm going to probably put a little bit more money in it because it looks like it's in good shape. Right, right. You said you signed away. In other words, you signed Sign away. Does does that mean that that takes you guys off the list of uh, liability? Um, when, when you say that, I, you, it's like I told them and they took the car no matter what. Yes. Okay. Because if you, you know, a lot of times people will come in and, you know, they want to know what's wrong with their car and they want to play Joey Backyard Mechanic. Hmm. Okay. Um, it needs a fuse and then you got to pay a hundred and, you know, hundred dollars, $79, whatever the uh, assessment fee is, you know, and a lot of times the dealers actually every single time the dealer will waive that fee. Mm -hmm. If you fix it, it might cost you a little bit more to have the dealer fix it, but wouldn't it be nice if you had something fixed and you drove away 24 hours a month. Three months down the road, hey, you fixed this, and now it's back. Mm -hmm. What they're going to tell you is, is we're sorry. Let's get it in here. Let's get it taken care of. Well, let's take the other hand. Hey, I told you about that fuse. Now that fuse has worked its way to your air conditioner control module, and now it's actually burning out something to do with your compressor. You know, And then you find yourself without air conditioning. Well, you know, all of a sudden, your compressor cuts down, it cuts a belt. When it cuts a belt, now you have no steering at 65 miles an hour. You're going to be broke down the side of the road. Hopefully you're not trying to steer at mm -hmm. that point because it's over at that point. It's all about preventative maintenance. Yeah, these guys are trying to make money out there, but you know, at the same point, it's their job. Yep. It's their job to make sure that that car is safe. You know, it's you know your job when you talk to me to find out what I want you know, and to make sure that I give you everything that you need and, you know, come to find out if that person didn't tell you you needed that, you say, geez, well, why didn't you just tell me? It almost sounds like that you guys have answers if people would just ask the damn question. Just to just ask the damn question, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's ab <laughs> absolutely correct. You know, and a lot of people, you know, they get caught up with watching some of these exposés on TV. You know, this one does that do. and does that and does this. We will absolutely fire somebody. And I will go to cussing quick if somebody pulls something on one of my customers. You know, we're we're not like that. Not every salesperson, every service person, not everybody is like that. You have to have a little bit of trust in somebody, mm -hmm. you know. And if you want to get a – It's a relationship, Al. It's a it's relationship. It's supposed to be, and I'm supposed to trust you like my preacher. That's – well, yeah, exactly right. You, you're supposed to. But, you know, everybody's a little precautious these times and ages. I think we talked about it last time. It's really hard to trust somebody when you're watching something on TV, mm -hmm. you know, or you hear something. Or the guy next door says, oh, they, they told me I needed uh, um, I needed an engine, and really all I needed is valve cover gaskets. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it needs this, it needs that. Those old days are gone. You know, you go to a big dealer, they're not, they're not going to play games like that. They're actually really trying to assess this problem and trying to fix it so that way you don't have to come back. You just come back for an oil change. Mm -hmm. It's wintertime. We know it's going to be probably the coldest one we've had in a long time. Yep. Um, one of the things that I see consistently on the news channel are cars that are pulled off to the side of the road. Someone didn't do their homework. Common man with, with two or three kids in the back seat. What is the one thing that we need to do for maintenance right now as we head into winter. Now, keep in mind that we're all busting our accounts for Christmas and the, and the funds are low. What can I do that is going to be cost-effective but effective? Um, you know, rather than waiting all year to check your radiator fluid, it's always, it's always good to keep an eye on that and make sure it's full, make sure it's got some color in it, make sure it doesn't smell like gas, make sure it doesn't smell, like, smell like oil. How would you get gas in there? Um, you know, sometimes fuel, that, that that runs into the problem when you have like a, uh, um, what I want to say, a thermostat problem. Really? Or you have anything, fuel has a way of leaking down into there. Um, 
there's so many things, you know, but I always tell my wife, you know, there's two things I look at at my car. There's three things I look at my car. I look at the oil. I look at my coolant and I check my tires. You know, I know everybody's trying to save some money on cars, you know, and Christmas is coming and things have been tight. We've been through a lot in the past few years, but you don't want to put your safety at risk. You don't want to put your job at risk. You definitely don't want to put your family at risk first and foremost. You know, if you look like you need tires or if your tires are humming, you're going down the road. If you're afraid to go into a shop and, you know, spend the, you know, 150 to $200 per tire, there's a, there's a million used car tire places all over the place. You know, you don't pull into the one that looks like, you know, it just opened. You know, pull into one that's reputable. They'll pull you out a set of tires. You spend $100, put the tire on it, make sure everything works. I always crank my heat up. I make sure everything works, make sure everything is nice and clean, make sure that the oil is good, make sure my tire pressure, because, you know, when the temperature changes, and I, and it did it to me this year when it got that first, first real cold snap, there's a tire warning that comes on. Tire warning isn't just on because it just came on because it, it wanted to. It's because you guys are doing it at the dealership. You're hitting a button, is it, right? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we oh, hit it's a button. Turn. Hit that yeah. button. How many times have you heard somebody <laughs> say, geez, I just went out of my warranty, and it's just... Unbelievable. Now we I have an engine light. Yeah, we have a special button. We know how to hit yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if, if people just maintain their car, the most important thing is, you know, your safety. I'm going to go out on the limb here. Um, you, you seem to have a lot of answers, and I know that I'm not asking all the questions. Can they call you? Yeah, they can definitely call me. I'm, I'm by my phone. I've got an email address. I mean, there's there's all kinds of ways that people can contact me. You want to do? You, can you do that now? Can you, yeah, that they can call me at seven zero four three four five zero two one two, or they can go to apbigcity05 at gmail dot com. Thank you so much, Big Al, Big Al from Performance Ford in Charlotte, North Carolina. Man, thank you so much for coming You're by welcome, today. Buddy. Yes, sir.